be punts or a bloke. Here you go. Uh, today, first up, just enjoying me glass of red wine. Out of me bogan cup. Nothing like a good glass of red. And today, we got Elm Overload. So we're going to work on these elms here today. Um, I'll give you a brief description of each one and where they're all headed. Um, first off, I just want to say that um, it's our first week of autumn here. Um, generally, autumn in most parts of the world would mean, you know, the leaves turn yellow, red, drop off. But here, our autumn is still pretty warm. So if you cut it back really early autumn, autumn, really wordy autumn, really early autumn, early, really early autumn, say that slow, Sam, you might get it right. Um, really early autumn, you'll still get a little bit of growth on your ramification and stuff. So these here are well overgrown. Chopped them back maybe eight weeks ago. So this is probably only eight weeks growth. I've been fertilizing with um, power feed uh, the, in the green tub and also fish emulsion, but power feed is fish emulsion as well. And also some Thrive, when I put a bit of Thrive on and a bit of worm juice. So a bit of a smorgasbord of food for the trees, but they seem to be loving it. They've just got so much growth. Just going absolutely crazy. So today, let's just give you an overview of each one. I'll keep you guys live for working on the first one. And then after that, I'll hyperlapse the last two because it'll be a similar process. Um, so let's talk through the trees. So this elm here it's one that I did a video on a while ago. I've dug it out the ground. It was in the ground for about four years, five years. It's been out the ground for about three years. Um, I worked on it maybe two years ago, a year after it came out the ground. And I've kept a really sweeping ugly branch, which everyone hated, which is partly the reason why I love it so much. And I'm going to keep it. Um, just because I'm an idiot and I like to be different, so I'm going to keep it. So there's a weird branch on there, but it's going to actually turn into a main trunk, but there's no growth along the branch until the end, which is weird, but I'm still keeping it. So I'm going to work on that one. That one's pretty well in development completely with some refinement going on on top. So the difference is development on a branch is when your branch when you've got a thick trunk, but your branch coming off the trunk is too thin. So you want to fatten it up. So these two branches here, and these two at the back, are what I class as in development. I'm trying to fatten up the base of them, so that where it comes off the trunk is nice and fat, and so that the lower branches are fatter than the top. So that's what I class as development. And you can do that into your secondary branching, and then by the time you get to your tertiary branching, branching, okay. I mean, I think I need another wine. Uh, by the time you get to your tertiary branching, I start to call that refinement. Um, so a lot of the top branches are in refinement, um, bottom ones are not. This one here, this little one, it's probably lost in all this maze of growth, but this little baby here, hope you can see it, is um, in full refinement now. Um, I've let it grow a little bit too far, so some of the branches at the top are getting too thick. So I'll work on that one. That one will be a super quick one. Uh, so that doesn't really have too much in the way of development. I don't know what's going on in here with this one. Okay, some of the branching looks pretty fat already to me, but maybe there's some stuff at the bottom that I could let grow. Um, probably have to wait, because it's all pretty fine growth here. 
probably have to wait till next year to let something run super long. Like these here have been on here for close to a year. Well, they may be, yeah, close to a year, these two, and these two at the back. So that's one year of growth, one season. Um, but I might just chop all this one back, um, like refinement, and maybe at the bottom leave some a bit longer, just so it has a little bit more strength and health at the bottom. That's about it. So let's work through this first tree. Um, we'll get into that, just have another sip here. A whole heap of bugs have just fallen in my cup from the tree. Me bogan wine cup. You know, I could have gone and got a proper wine glass, but then I just looked like a looked like the old, you know, toffee nose. And I don't want to look like that. I've got better things to do than be a toffee nose. We're out here to have fun and muck around. And you know what? Personally, I think bogans, Aussie bogans, have a lot more fun than the old topping nose. So here we go. Hope I didn't offend anyone out there. I'm sure when everyone has a drink, we all end up bogans. Even the topping nose end up mucking around like a bogan once they have a few drinks. Anyway. Get a bit off topic here, so let's get back to topic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep you guys live as I trim all these back short. So it's going to take a while. Hopefully at some point I think of some sort of a story to tell. Um, a bit of history on this tree. Uh, well, just trying to think. I grew it in the ground for four to five years. Okay. Um, well, if I go right back, I got this tree, I'm, oh, by the way, I'm cutting everything back to the, around about the second node, just a nice short length. Um, anyway, I got this tree from Mitre 10, probably 10 years ago, mm, no, more than that, nearly 12 years ago, because I went and bought, this is one of my very first trees as far as not as far as bonsai, but as far as stock. So when I first got into bonsai, within the first six months, I went from oh, probably, well, obviously one tree, because you always start with one. I was going to say probably one tree. Well, Dursan, definitely one tree. But... In the first six months, I reckon I expanded that to maybe 80 to 100, probably 80 trees, and within a year I had it well over 100. And at the worst, it got probably up around 300 trees. But anyway, this is one of the very first ones. So it's nearly 12 years I've had this. So if I work out the timeline, I reckon I had it in the ground. First, I had it as a whip on the bench. By the way, this little baby one and this one here, Trying to think whether that one was the same time or not. I think it was. This little baby one on the table here, exactly the same age as this one, and the same, you know, Chinese elm. But this one down here has been in a pot its whole life. This one here went in the ground for probably five years. So you can see the trunk difference. This one here can literally sit under there, especially after I trim it. Exactly the same age. So all of these are the same age. Here's a bit of interest for you. Pretty sure they're all exactly the same age. Which means I lied about how long that one was in the ground. Because I dug it up only three years ago. It means it's probably been in the ground eight or nine years. So you caught me out. You caught me out on a lie. But there you go. So we're just trimming back. A lot of these branches back to a really short stuff. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm a bit all over the place here with this video because I started telling you about the history of this tree and then I stopped again. So to go back to the history of this tree, 
I got it back when I first started, maybe six months in, maximum six months in, and I bought a whip from Mod 10. Now, with the whip, I reckon I kept them as a whip, together with that small one and the other one over there. I kept them all on the benches for the first, I'm going to say two years. And then, by the time two years was up, I realised, because I have been, I was just working in the shed like I am now, nothing's changed, still working in the shed, still having a beer, a porter, a wine while I do it, so nothing's changed. But, after two years, I decided, you know what, I like big trunks. Um, whether or not it's to compensate for something else, we don't know. But all I'm saying is I like big trucks. And I realised that after the first couple of years of Bontai. So I planted this one and the far one in the ground. Um, say two years, I'd say two years after I've got them. First two years, so pretty well barely improved their trunk thickness in the first two years. So you got to think that little one there is 12 years old in a pot. This one here is 12 years old but it's been in the ground. So then it got planted in the ground I'd say for five years. I reckon yeah five years and I reckon what happened is after about three or four years, I think three, first two years it took a while to establish in the ground and the third year it just went bonkers. Absolutely overloaded with growth and it really exponentially fattened up the trunk like four times as thick as the year before. And then I started thinking, holy crap, I've got to get this thing out of the ground before the Got to get this thing out the ground before the bonsai pot cost me too much dough to try and buy a pot for it. So, I thought, well, the very least I could do, because it had been about, yeah, probably three years. Um, the very least I could do is at least give it a big trunk chop to give it a little bit of uh, shape. So about here would have been here or here, probably here, is about where I would have chopped it. Then I would have let this one here grow the next year, crazily, and then chopped it here. And then the fourth, uh, fifth year, I would have let this one grow and then just chop it that much taller. And also let this one grow and then chop it out there. That's what would have happened in the very final year in the ground, the fifth year. So that's how you develop a tree. First you get the thickness of the trunk you want, then you chop it, then you get some shape, chop it again. Get some more shape the next year, chop it again. If you're still not happy with the branching and the shape, chop it again. And by about the sixth year, you know, in the ground, most trees are as fat as you'd ever want them after six years in the ground. And because it's a deciduous tree, and deciduous trees don't mind being dug up, I never ever dug it out the ground in that whole five years never chopped around the roots none of that i literally just let it grow and trunk chopped it you know what's that three third fourth and then the fifth year when i dug it out so three times all up and then but the third time was as i dug it another trunk chop and then i pulled it out the ground and then basically all I had was a trunk, main trunk, with a secondary trunk out here. And then I reckon for two years I let this big fat bottom one grow. For probably two years and let it get really fat. And that would have been a six foot long branch. So that's how you develop things. If it's not fat enough, let something on that branch grow. You can let other little branches grow and keep cutting other little branches back if you want to. Try and develop a branch pad at the same time that you're developing 
well, thickness. So you can do that. But always, always, if you're, if you're not happy with the size of that trunk or trunk when it's in the ground or branches, once you get it out the ground, the size of the branches, God's sakes, just let them grow. Don't cut them back. Let them get really big and long and they fatten up exponentially and you can even let them grow for two to three years to really get that fatness because you don't want your bottom branch to be cut constantly constantly like it's a refined branch because it's not it's still a thin branch it needs thickening up so you let it grow like this so here we've got a tree that looks you know to most people you would say that's a pretty highly developed tree which it is okay so from the front it really does look like a full really nice developed tree and it's getting there, but it's still got a bloody long way to go as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so I'm still on my I'm still in my development stage. I've got almost no trees in refinement. And this is proof. I'm gonna still leave this here for the rest of this year. In winter or spring, I'll chop these two back. Probably winter, because Chinese elms don't care about being chopped back in winter. But I'll probably do it late winter when it's nearly ready to push because if you do it too early what can happen is it can actually force a couple of new buds to come out and then they get then they sort of die off because it's too cold they go holy crap it's actually winter then they go back to sleep shrivel up if you like going for a swim when it's too cold and yeah that's well Got what I was saying after that. So, um, chop it back late winter, and then I'm going to let it grow. I'll chop it back late winter, then I'm going to let it grow again, and I may let it grow for six, eight months until the third branching is sticking up for down the bottom of the tree, like that. And then I'll start to constantly cut it back, like all these branches that I am at the top here. So, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Every tree is different. Some trees will thicken up the bottom branch so quick that you don't have to muck around growing them out for too long. Others might need three or four years growing the bottom branching out more and more. And because trees are apically dominant, which means like to grow in the apex or in the top of the tree, likes to grow quicker and stronger than the bottom. Quite often, even on a developed tree, you have to start to let the bottom shoots run wild for a while and then cut them back again because otherwise you're gonna end up with a tree where the top thickens up and takes over the bottom. So that's in, that's in development, so I'm gonna leave that, not touch that one. Go. That one there is still in, that's part of that one in development. Okay, and then we've got some branches down here, which are a little bit weaker. I'm going to cut them a bit longer. So instead of really short like the top, I'll cut them a bit longer so they're a little bit stronger and get to see more light. The base of this branch is not too bad, happy with that, so I'm going to leave that and just chop them back a bit longer so that it keeps a bit more strength to it. Obviously leave this, leave that one because that's developing that branch. Keep chopping the top back quite short for refinement. Um, try to keep two branches from any one location, not three. But by no means is this your final um, trim of the tree I would say in winter we're going to come back in here and then get a lot more selective on cutting it back to only two from any one location so I'm not overly worried if there's three at this stage especially seeing as already in autumn I've probably only got six weeks of growth left before these things decide they want to start shutting down. 
So we'll worry about having two branches from any one location then. And then we can go in and clean it back a bit and get rid of any strong, you know, nubs and stuff at the end of branches that are quite fat. Because there is some at the top that are quite like that with a few shoots off. We can come back and cut them back later and get a bit more refined like that. But for now, let's just cut everything back short, keep it simple. Okay. I hope I haven't made it sound too complex, but all you're doing, growing your trunk as fat as you want, growing your bottom branches to the fatness that you want by letting them get really long. Then you cut them back, then you let them grow again, cut them back. The top, the whole time on the top, you're probably trying to slow it down, cutting it back all the time, which is why the top ends up so much more refined so quickly, because a lot of the energy pushes there. But the bottom, to get the fatness, we have to let it grow. So if you want to branch fatter, let it grow. When it's fat enough, you can start cutting it back. Simple. If you want it fat, let it grow. If it's fat enough, start cutting it back. Very simple. And at the end of each season, you might decide, you know, it's up to you. You can leave a branch like this at the end of the season, and then the next year let it grow out again. And then it could end up eight foot long, which is what I probably did the year, two years before that. Or you can chop back at the end of the season and then let the next growth grow for a whole season again. It's up to you how you want to do it. I think to get your best result, you'd probably be better off leaving these on if you still wanted to fatten up that branch. You'd be better off leaving these on for two years rather than one. And I may well do that if it's not fat enough, but like I say, it's still got another eight weeks of growing. So let's hope that it is fat enough. And if it's not, well, we'll leave it. Or if we don't leave it and I cut it back, the next lot of shoots I'll let grow for another probably year to really help fatten up that whole branch structure. So, I mean, it's, it is pretty simple. It's not rocket science. I hope I've harped on about it long enough for you guys to understand what I'm saying. Remember, don't make big cuts early winter because if you make really big cuts early winter, what's going to happen is the tree is going to try and respond and shoot out in winter. And being that Chinese elms are actually almost semi-deciduous in a way because they can actually get away with being in a more semi-tropical climate and they don't actually lose, lose all their leaves. It means that by chopping it back too early, you will get that extra growth. And like I say, it will trivel up, same as if you go for a swim in a cold lake. So I'm getting pretty happy with about how much I've trimmed it back. It's pretty good. Like I say, I can come back in winter when it's dropped all its leaves and really fine tune it. And we've got these branches here and these ones here to grow and we're pretty well done. I'll give you a quick spin if I can without knocking everything else over. Just help that branch around. So that's the back of the tree. So that's a back branch, by the way, this one here I'm trying to fatten up, and that's the side, oh, excuse me, side branch. Okay, so that's that. Um, I'll try to, actually, I'll do this one here while we're here. This one's not going to take long. This one's all in refinement so everything is just going to get cut back really short I'm happy with the size of all the branching like I say this one here was 
or is exactly the same age. Bought from Mitre 10 as a whip. Left in a pot. And it literally took quite a few years of me growing it in a pot, chopping it back, growing it, chopping it, growing it, chopping it. Before I was even interested in this tree, the trunk was fairly crappy and it didn't want to grow. And then when it did grow, it was growing the wrong spot. Had massive inverse taper, so then I chopped it back. And I say inverse taper is bad, but it, it just didn't suit this tree. Um, and I just didn't like it, you know. Me and this tree were not friends. And then one year I thought buggy, and I trimmed it back really hard. No, I didn't even trim it. I think I snapped it. I think I was like, you know what, buggy, and I snapped it outside out here. So it came up here, it grew up there in a big whip, and I just snapped it off. Thought I hate you, tree. Snapped it off, and then it shot a shoot out there, and then created itself a really natural look. I think it didn't want to go in the fire heat. To be honest, it knew what I was thinking, and now me and this tree have been good friends ever since. A bit like, you know, you have a good old brawl with someone. Not that I do because I'm too weak. You have a good old brawl or a fight with someone at school when you used to be back at school. And then you end up best of mates. Well, me and this tree, we're best of mates now. I love it. And it's really become quite a really nice tree to look at. As far as a smaller tree, we've got to give the small dudes a bit of a chance as well as the big guys. And this one here certainly fights pretty hard for its weight class. She's a beaut. Beaut of a tree. Doing well, mate. Doing well. Just really, the last few years, it's really, really started to come into its own. It's just a beautiful little tree. Okay, so that's that one done. I hope I'm not boring you guys too much with me jabbering on. I'm going to try and find something to jabber on about, otherwise, it's pretty boring just watching me. So I know we've got a background. Hang on, I'll go up on the wall. There you go, look at that tree. I'll give you a spin. It's the back. Look at that. Just beautiful. Look at the branch structure. So it's coming along really well. Look at the base. It's really starting to get a nice base. And it's amazing to think that little guy, same age as that. Look at that. Like its little brother. Bloody beautiful, isn't it? Well, you can't even see that, Sam, you idiot. You just put the camera up in the air. All right, let's repeat that. It's amazing to think these guys are the same age, exactly. And look at that. Little brother. Put you under there under the protection of your brother. Don't you fall off there on the ground. Look at that. It's under the wing. Beauty. Right. Now we're going to work on this one over here. But I've done enough jabbering and my throat's getting sore and I've almost got to go and get a refill because my wine's getting low. And I'm going to put you guys on a hyperlapse. Cheers. Welcome back. Well, we got our trees all trimmed up. Doesn't look like it with these here sacrifice branches. 
which is aiding the development or the th or the thickening. When I say development, I mean, I mean the thickening of the bottom branches. So that's that one. Give it a quick spin. Without knocking everything over here. Okay. So that's that one. Is that the front? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the front. Let's go. I showed you this little baby. Gave you a bit of a spin of that baby. It's pretty cool. Really cool. That's that baby. And I'll give you a spin of this one. It's in the full development. Um, this is that ugly branch. No one wants. But I'm going to keep it just to be, you know, defiant. So that's going to be my defiant branch. And the rest of the tree, well, let's see what happens. So give you a bit of a spin of that one as well. This one's full of house spiders, big black house spiders underneath that rim. So I've got to be careful. Spin. You know, it's debatable whether that could be the front, but I don't think. I think the front's still going to be around there somewhere. That's it. So that's the uh, Elm Overload video done. Um, I had to go on a hyperlapse on this one before I embarrassed myself, you know. Having me wine here. Could have embarrassed myself. So I stopped short of doing that, I hope. And did a hyperlapse. Mm. Alright. That's what Bonzo is all about. Having fun. So that's it, three arms done. Cheers for watching Aussie Fonzo Bloke. Please like, share, subscribe. Tell your mates about my channel, it really helps. The more you share, the more views I get. And if you're watching and you haven't subscribed, normally I say don't bloody bother. But today I'm gonna to say please do because about half of the viewers aren't subscribed so it will give me a massive, massive boost. If everyone out there, please click the subscribe, click the bell, give me a massive boost on the YouTube forum, platform, forum, platform. Um, if you guys subscribe, the other half that's not, I'd double in a day, but that, I know that won't happen. But anyway, let's see what we can do. Cheers for watching. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll keep the videos coming. Really, really a lot of fun. Thanks very much for your comments and all that sort of stuff. No worries, cheers. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Hey guys, look what the cat dragged in. New present. I'm going to be doing a review on this. Got it, uh, you know, got it to do a review on. One of my first, or if not the first review, apart from Adrian Eggleton's turntables. So, got our first review. So, stay tuned for that. Cheers. Thank you to the beautiful wife for, for getting it from the post office. Cheers.